You cannot come to Canada without your IELTS. You have to have IELTS before you come to Canada. So if you have a two years study, you get a three years work permit. Anything two years and above, you get a three years work permit. Ditching the Nigerian passport for another African country like Ghana, Ivory Coast, even Angola to obtain a visa from the Canadian Embassy. What are the odds of being granted a visa? My sister, I don't do Ilega. Is it a sister or a brother? <laughs> I don't know. Whichever. Use your Nigerian passports. We have lots of Nigerians here in Canada. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time, I am Sassy Funke and I'm a Nigerian travel and lifestyle content creator. So I'm gonna try and get straight into this video. I asked a number of you, like over the past couple of weeks, about your questions about Canadian immigration. And I think I mentioned that I'm gonna get my cousin to actually answer those questions for you. But, you know, I, I found someone more knowledgeable than her. So I didn't want to like shortchange you guys, you know? I'm kidding, but definitely here is Tunukia. She's my cousin's friend. And we're right here in Regina, Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan, yes. And she's going to be answering your questions. She's extremely knowledgeable. So I really want you guys to really, you know, appreciate the effort and sort of like her insights into this. So make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Like the more thumbs up you get, we get, the more maybe we can respond to your comments in the comment sections. Because I know you guys are going to have so many comments, right? So give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, subscribe. And yes, we're going to get straight into the questions right now oh actually you know let me let you introduce yourself briefly so that people don't feel like you know i'm just the only one on here okay my name is tinuki <laughs> <laughs> no it's fine okay, it's fine okay that's no, you both people call me Tinuke, but it's Tinuke. Okay, my name is Tinuke and I live in Regina, Saskatchewan. I've been here for like five years now and um yes let's get to the video. Yes okay so the first question I received was from Conrad on Twitter he said I want to know if migration is possible mm -hmm. without the IELTS and what's the criteria? Thanks. So is it possible migration to Canada from Nigeria? No. Okay. You cannot come to Canada without your IELTS. You have to have IELTS before you come to Canada. IELTS. Same thing as IELTS. Okay. So you have to have that before you come. The criteria is you register for the exam. You study and you pass it. And um, it depends on your age. If you are 35 and below, um, you can still like, cause it's, everything is point based, right? So if you're 35 and below, you can still have like maybe a six point something, seven. But if you're above 35, you should strive hard to have like maybe eight. And one game changer that people don't know is listening. Mm. You have to have at least eight in listening that is the big game changer and then you can have seven 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 across the other parts right but listening try to have eight if you have eight in listening that, that would change everything for you so you must have IELTS before you migrate to Canada yeah I think that's pretty insightful that you actually mentioned the sort of the numbers like mm -hmm. listening is really important I don't think I've ever heard that before so that's actually really good information right there Okay, so the next question came from Instagram and the person asked, um, talk to Bolex. He said, how can a Nigerian registered nurse migrate to Canada with a family? So how is that possible? What's the, is there some general sort of like accreditations that you need to get or how easy is this for the transition? Okay, so um, all licensed professional are expected to research and contact their um, licensing body before they even migrate into Canada and when they get to Canada. We have a lot of licensed um, professions, like the engineers, the doctors, the lawyers, you know, so you have to do a research to know what your licensing bodies are. You can even contact them. I think they have phone numbers or emails. You can send them an email and ask for what 
are the required steps that mm -hmm. you need and they will definitely respond back to your email so yeah you need to contact them know what you need to do before you can be able to work here or something so yeah. contact your licensing body i guess the great point there is also that there's actually information available online that people can go to as right. it's not like in nigeria whereby you send an email no one responds for weeks people actually are there working to respond right to give you the information you need so definitely yeah. reaching out and you can call them as well and they will pick up your call or leave them a voicemail they will reach out to you once they hear your voicemail. Perfect. So next question is from Fuse in Film. How to settle in Canada on student visa during or after school? Also, pay in-state tuition. I, I guess that means, how can they also pay in-state tuition? Okay. So how to settle in Canada on a student visa? Okay, let me take it one at a time. Okay. So how to settle in Canada during your student visa? You're here to study. I would advise that you face your studies, have your degree or whatever you've come here to do before cost. After your studies, you get like um, a postgraduate work permit that will help you to be able to settle in Canada. So the thing here is if you study and you have like um, a year degree, you get a year um, post study work permit. Mm. If you do anything more than two years, you get a three years post study work permit. So with your post-study work permit, you should be able to convert that to a permanent residence um, status. So all you need to do is get a job and maybe do the express entry. You can go online to CIC website. You should get some information about that as well. But I know for sure that when you have a one year um, degree, mm -hmm. you get a one year post-study if you do anything um, two years in a, um, and more you get a three years post study so within that period of time you can actually get your PR so within a year uh, having that post study visa you can actually get your PR yes okay. but then you need to do a good research there are some provinces that will not make that possible okay even with your three years if you're not smart you might not get a PR so you need to do a research and look for the provinces that would pay you. If you have one year post-study work permit, I would advise that you don't stay in Ontario. I'm sorry yeah. for the people that live in Ontario. <laughs> Move to places like Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Alberta, you know, they have more friendly um, immigration policies, yeah, policies right? I, I know some places who say, okay, you need to work for three months and then you're qualified to apply. Some places will say six months and you're mm. qualified to apply. Some will say in your field of study. Some places will say you have to work for two years before you're qualified to apply. So if you have a one year work permit and you're just, you did do your research and you're looking for a job and you can only have a postgraduate work permit once in a lifetime. Oh wow. So you don't want to blow that chance, the once in a lifetime chance, right? So you want to make use of it. So you have to do a research of which province would pay me, Let's right? Yeah, so that's the advice I would give there. Oh, great, great. So, so, so yeah, what's the oh, next yeah, I think, question? Um, I think the, he has the three questions. Also, yes, he said after school, I guess after school is, you can't, so are we saying that you can't settle while you're in school? Because you mentioned after school, you get the work permit and then you get the PR. Mm -hmm. Is there a possible way where you're still in school to actually get a PR? Yes, it is possible. Okay. You must have had like, at least a one year work experience from wherever you're coming from nigeria or wherever you're coming from because um to get a permanent residence it's based on points like you have to do english you evaluate your certificates um, years of work experience your age mm -hmm. so if you've had like a one year work experience from back home and you have ages on your side and maybe you've done your bsc before or even your masters i know some people have done masters before and then they come here to do postgraduate certificate anything to just get into canada right mm -hmm. you've had your masters and um what's the third one your english test and you do very well you can apply for express entry or even some provincial nomination programs so you have to research okay what is Saskatchewan doing what is Manitoba doing what is mm -hmm. Alberta doing what is Ontario doing and then you look for which one pays you more mm -hmm. I've seen people who got their permanent residency before they actually finished school oh, wow. so yeah you can and then settlement fund you must have the settlement fund I think if you're in Canada already, I'm not sure. So you have to research that. If you're in Canada already, I'm not sure if settlement fund is part of what you need. But if you're coming out from Canada, you need settlement fund. 
and and just to so understand settlement from what is that settlement plan? so you need a certain amount of money in your bank account. Ah, okay for it to come through okay yeah and also i think the final part of the question was about paying in-state tuition okay. is there any way that they can pay in-state tuition so if you are not permanent resident or a citizen there is no way There's you no have way to pay that. international fee all right so the next question from Chem Z Y B. Um, she asks, "What advice can we give a Nigerian optometrist who wants to settle down in Canada?" That's one of the questions. There are other follow-up questions, but we'll start with that one. So, a Nigerian optometrist who wants to settle down in Canada. What's the advice? Okay, so like I said earlier, um, for every licensed, every licensed profession, you have to research and contact your licensing body for every licensed profession contact them ask them questions like what what do i need to do they would answer you they will respond to your email so next question also from her was how many years can someone get a permanent residence if he or she enters through express entry once you get to the border uh, like once you get to the point of entry you get your you permanent get yeah once you get to the point of entry you get it so she's got juice on instagram asks how does an american citizen settle in canada assuming the person has a canadian student visa at mph masters and for them to settle and naturalize in canada and the second part is if the person also wants to bring their an immediate family member along okay so you can naturalize like just any other nationality you have to evaluate your results you have to write english tests you have to do ev the same thing every other person would do to get naturalized so you can go through either express entry or nomination programs there are different um different provinces have different nomination programs so you can go through that as well and um your second question is if you want to bring your family right mm -hmm. so what your family would do is to get an eta from wherever they are and they must be americans as well so once they get the eta they come in to canada you will have to take them to the border and then they would give them a study permit if you still have a study permit they will give them a study permit and lock them to years say for instance you have just two years left on your study visa they will give them two years if you have one year left on your study visa they'll give them one year so all you need to do is just take them to the border and they will get their visas as well all right so the next question is from op v vaughn on instagram and the person asked what's an alternative job for an img i believe who can't practice medicine in canada and which companies would hire us so what's an alternative job i would say you can still work in the hospital but it might not be as a doctor you can do some others, maybe management, I don't know, not in the medical line, but I would really think that you can do some other jobs, but not a doctor. You Perhaps can practice. Like yeah, maybe. so, and then you can also be, like, do, like, a work with, is it a care home, they call them, you know, but you cannot practice as a doctor. You can write your resume and, you know, get a job in the health sector you can do some other things in the health sector but you can't practice as a medical doctor okay. until you write your exams and you pass them so i guess you know in terms of companies that would hire you have to probably do your own research and find out you know yeah, online there's, there's know. a list you can find out yes, that I online don't know the companies that would hire you. <laughs> african truly on youtube asks what about doctors what's the process for doctors migrating from nigeria i know age plays a huge role and he puts in bracket 43 so as he's saying he's 43, how does that affect sort of like the process for doctors migrating? Okay, um, so um, age is a very big factor. You're 43 already. If you do everything right, like write your IELTS, you have the um, settlement fund and all, you would be like in the range of the 300s. That's if you're going express entry. If you're going federal directly, you'll be in the range of the 300s. And then you will remain in the pool until the day that they pull a 300 and something point but truth be told they've never gone low to 300 the lowest if i remember correctly was 417 and that was like maybe three years ago it's always between the range of 450 460 470 you know that's what they draw in the pool that being said you still have a hope as a 43 year old guy even if you're 49, you still have a hope 
your hope here is you go through provision nomination. You have to research what province is looking for your skill set. For example, Saskatchewan has a list of skill sets they're looking for. So as a doctor, you have to look for which province is looking for a medical doctor. Once you get the, that province, you apply through that province for their provincial nomination. The provincial nomination certificate automatically gives you 600 points. So say you have 300 and something in the pool already. Your 600 points plus 300 and something puts you at 900 and something. Once they do the next draw, I think it's usually twice a month if I'm not mistaken, and they draw 450, even if they draw 500 or 600, you are covered. So there's no how they will not give you ITA invitation to apply. So my best advice for anybody who is above 35, 36, should go through a province so you have to research what province is looking for my skill set and then you apply through the province you need to go read what the requirements are for that province and for that um the job that you are applying through and then that will give you 600 points okay, that's good at least not no whole hope is not lost yeah. for you know the older people so i really hope that's helped um next question um from carlson amber is what's the best telecommunication company for immigrants coming to canada let's answer that first because so she has a number of questions best telecommunication company and which one do you use um i use saxtel okay. i live in saskatchewan so i use saxtel we have saxtel we have access we have bell we have but i can't say this is the best but why do you use the one that you're using why do you use it because it is government and i work for the government ah, okay. <laughs> we don't want to take our money out <laughs> right so That's yeah funny. okay next question is is it that difficult to find a part-time job here no it is not it's not difficult. yeah so you just um if you are you talking about canada in canada in yeah canada. Canada. i guess an immigrant coming for part-time part no it's not difficult as okay. long as you throw out your resume and you are proactive about it you surely get okay. something yeah okay so how do new immigrants manage their finances like how is the banking sector in canada so managing your finances and banking sector banking sector in what aspects like um, to work or because i don't get that but how you manage your finances i guess maybe they mean in terms of opening a bank account is it easy for an immigrant to come in and like you know easily open a bank account yes. do they require you need your sin number so once you come in as um an immigrant the first thing you you're required to do is to get a sin number so with that sin number you can open your bank account but you need a sin number to open a bank account and you can open your bank account at any time so it's that easy okay yeah next question also from carlson amber is about accommodation for immigrants i heard you need a credit history to be able to rent in canada is that um, true no well i'll talk for saskatchewan no you don't i don't know if other provinces would require a credit um a credit history mm -hmm. but for saskatchewan no you don't okay okay, okay. um Oluwa Shin and your la asks please how much do i need to migrate to canada as a single lady i have a bsc in business administration how do i get a job and how much for funds do i need to have in my account thank you okay so for a single lady i think you need about twelve thousand five hundred. it's on the cic website mm -hmm. how much you need so you can go and research so, but I think it, it, it is 12,500 Canadian dollars. And what's our next question again? Um, it was, how do I get a job? You apply. You apply. <laughs> you apply. And there are some sites that you can go to. Like, um, we have Saks Job in Saskatchewan. So, there are a list of jobs and the companies that want to hire, right? So, you can go on Saks Jobs and see, okay, what job do they have? And do I am I qualified? And right. then you apply. All you need to do is just apply. Perfect. Okay. The excellent teacher, um, that's her name. She asked, "What's teaching in a Canadian school like? How do Canadians respond to African teachers? Are there private primary schools in Canada, or are they all government sponsored?" So I guess the first question is, "What's teaching like in a Canadian school?" I would say it's for me. I'm talking for Saskatchewan because I know Saskatchewan is a very good place. We are peaceful, loving. You know, I'm not saying other provinces are not, but I am uh, a Saskatchewan. 
Nee. Nee. Nein. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so I'm talking about Saskatchewan. I don't think there's any issues with you um, teaching in Saskatchewan. I actually have friends that are teachers and I've never heard of any bad report mm. from them. So it's good here in Saskatchewan. And I believe it is so in other provinces as well. Okay, so the question about are there private primary schools in Canada or are they all government sponsored? Yes, we do have some private um, schools in Canada. They are not all um, government sponsors. We have um, the public, we have the Catholic, and then we have some other pri Christian run private school. We have Montessori, I think. So I think there are lots of, lots of um, different ones. Yeah, there. lots. It's not all government. Yeah. All right. Um, AJ Law asks How easy is it to immigrate as a UK citizen? Are there any advantages because of the Commonwealth link? To immigrate to Canada from England is the same as any other nationality. Mm. We've answered this before. before yeah. yeah, so you have to do the IELTS, you have to show proof of fund, you have to have the age, you have to, you know, do everything that every other nationality would do for you to migrate to Canada. Okay. Is there any other question? Yeah, yes, there is. No, from, from that's the person. Um, no, no, that was just said about okay. Commonwealth link. Okay. To see there's an advantage for No, there's there. no advantage, same thing. But when you get here, the advantage you would have when you get here is you don't have to do a road test, driver's test, like driver's license. For you to be able to drive, you don't need to do that. Or you can just take your own... Yes, they'll just, they convert, they will just convert it. it, but I don't know, they, sh well, they don't have to do That's any test. Yeah. If you have kids, your kids will go through the same process that every other kid will go through. And um, the only thing is they don't have to, they will go to the welcome center, but the only thing they don't have to do is do the test. Because if you're not born in Canada, you have to go through the welcome center mm -hmm. and then they will do like a test for you before you go to the school. Right. But if you're from the UK, you don't have to do the test. Right. Okay. So that's, 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 that's part that's, of the advantages you that's have, great. right? You don't have to do the driver's um, test, you don't have to do the road test, mm. and your kids don't have to like do the exams. Yes. All right, so the next question is from Mohammed Kenzie. He said, if I am in school in Canada for two years, how many more years do I have to live there in order to apply for a permanent residency? So if you have a two years study, you get a three years work permit. Anything two years and above, you get a three years work permit. Yes. Wale Baba Femi said, isn't it an issue to Canadian immigration authorities, the dominance and concentration of Indian immigrants in the program as a whole? <laughs> I no. understand your question. Yes, I don't think as a, she's not the. Yeah, I don't authority. work with the CIC, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, would be career on Instagram asks Will a BSN, BSC, BA, or MS from a Nigerian or Ghanaian university be recognized to get me a job in Canada? Or do I need further school or, um, or evaluation? No, you don't. Before you come to Canada, remember that you would evaluate your results with West World Education Services. Mm -hmm. And once the, the evaluate your results, you get a certificate that says your BSc is equivalent to Canadian BSc. Mm. Or your MSc is equivalent to um, Canadian MSc. So you do not need to go to school. But if you just think that, okay, I just want to get a little more knowledge or something, you can, but you don't have to go to school here in Canada before you get a job. I didn't go back to school before I got my job. So you don't have to. Yeah. Okay, great. Would be career also ask this question. Since Nigerian passport don't cast, would you suggest digit <laughs> ditching the Nigerian passport for another African country like Ghana, Ivory Coast, even Angola, to obtain a visa from the Canadian Embassy. What are the odds of being granted a visa? My sister, I don't do illegal. Is it a sister or a brother? <laughs> I don't know. Whichever. I don't do anything that is illegal. If you are not a citizen of Ghana or Angola or something, do not, do not do that. Because mm. even the Canadian um, authority can know, and once they know, they will ban you. Use your Nigerian passports. We have lots of Nigerians here in Canada and we all use our Nigerian passport to come here. Just follow the due process. Mm. If you follow the due process, you will get what you want. 
Don't do magumago, don't do behind the door, don't do behind the Go straight. Corner. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I think this is the last question. I think so. This lady, Lola Williams, she asks, my husband and I applied for PR. We were eligible, entered the pool, and we got an ITA. We've submitted all documents required since February, three days to the deadline. Mm -hmm. We've waited over seven months now, mm -hmm. over one month since the six month wait. Mm -hmm. My question is, are, is, the, is it normal to wait this long? Mm -hmm. How do we know how visa office? Mm -hmm. Is there a reachable number to contact and follow up? Because mm -hmm. when we send in mails, we always get like automated responses, mm -hmm. uh, nothing concrete. Okay. So before now, it used to be six months. Six months used to be six months. But right now, you know, Canada is like the hot cake in hot the cake. world. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to come to Canada, not only Nigerians, like everybody. Even people from the US, people from the UK, people from Australia, all African countries, Asia. So it is now very, very busy. Fine, they said six months, but it might take up to nine to one year. So even if you contact them, you will get an automated um, message. There's nothing you can do. You can just wait. Mm -hmm. But uh, honestly, I don't think there's anything you can do. Yeah, just yeah. wait. It will get to your turn. Yes. I know people that have waited nine months, one year, and they got it after nine months, one year. Okay, so just wait and um, it will come. It will surely come if you have all the requirements. Okay, guys, so that's pretty much all your questions answered. If I missed anything, I'm sorry. But, you know, you can try and leave your comments, um, your questions in the comment section below. Thank you so much, uh, Tunikhet, for coming on here. Because, you know, I don't, people don't like to come on my YouTube channel. <laughs> so you guys have to appreciate, like, show some love. So that when, next time I'm in Regina, I'll be like, please, another video. And she'll be like, sure. You know, so thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate Anytime. it. Yes. Anytime. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, give this video a thumbs up. I'm going to be doing follow-up videos in terms of mistakes Nigerians make. But you guys will, you see that very soon. All right. Thank you. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.